Here I'm detailing stable cascaded shadow maps. So if I get close to the shadow map, you can see that the shadow stays nice and stable. You don't see any aliasing along the edges. So if I go to the other one over here, same thing. So that's all well and good, but unfortunately it comes at a cost of, you lose a lot of texture resolution when you do this. And I'm still debating whether I want to do this or not. Because again, you lose a lot of resolution, which I I really am not willing to lose just so that I can have, you know, stable shadow maps, which in the game, most people aren't really going to notice it. So I'll have to think about whether I'm going to keep this or not. But they sure are stable. Even when you rotate and translate. And if I rotate the light source, if I can find it. Yeah, there it is. Let's select the light source. Have some fun rotating it. And I guess I'll select, yeah, I'll select an object so we can see it interacting with the world as I move it around. So that's what's great about these shadows. They're completely interactive and they'll respond to anything that's in the world. So they're perfectly dynamic and perfectly stable. My problem again is that you lose a lot of texture resolution and, you know, it would be nice to have higher resolution shadow maps instead of wasting them trying to get stable shadows, which aren't really going to make that much of a difference. So for the next video, I'll post uh, the shadows without being st stabilized. So then you can see the difference. There'll be higher resolution, but there'll be a lot of jaggies along the edges. Thanks and bye.